Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shai, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, I'll be going over the 2007 Thai horror film, Sick Nurses. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film while breaking down each scare scene and rating them on how scary they are or attempt to be. Sick Nurses combines one of my ultimate pleasures with one of my ultimate fears. Sexy nurses with creepy, ghostly Asian women with long hair. But how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we explore sick nurses and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins deceptively sexy as a man takes the lingerie off a woman's body. In reality, the woman is dead as we see a possibly fatal injury on her chest. The man is a doctor named Tar and is surrounded by four nurses helping him prep the body. Dr. Tar runs an illegal operation selling dead bodies from his hospital. While the rest prep the body, two nurses sit on the sidelines and one of their faces is covered in blood and tears. <laughs> In a flashback, we learn that the woman was a fellow nurse who was threatening to blow the lid off the illegal operation. Her fellow nurses held her down and murdered her in cold blood. The song during the opening credits sounds just like the Ganados theme from Resident Evil 4. Also, there's my name with an A at the end. The film's title appears on screen as the clock is filled with blood. Still not scarier than this clock. Time's up, SpongeBob. While attending an awards banquet for the hospital, Dr. Tar contacts his buyer and wonders why the body hasn't been picked up yet. The buyer tells him to chill out and wait at the usual spot. He looks at a photo of his late fiance named Dawan, you know, the one he had killed to cover up his secret operation. We see a brief flash back where he is introduced to her sister named Nook and gazes at her a little longer than a soon-to-be married man should. Dr. Tar is awarded Doctor of the Year but fell just short of receiving Fiancé of the Year. All the nurses are gathered in a break room and talk about Dawan who has been dead for seven days. The nurse named E says that spirits always return to the one they love on the seventh day. With less than 30 minutes till midnight, Nurse Joe believes that there isn't enough time for her to do anything. The next hour of this film definitely says otherwise. The nurses partake in several team-building activities such as spitting food at each other, flipping people out of their chairs, and slapping. They all seem like wonderful people. Two of the nurses are twin sisters, Am and On, who are lying in bed engaging in activities that sisters should not be engaging in. While the nurses aren't exactly what you would call developed characters, they all have distinct personalities and specific obsessions that make them stand out. E is obsessed with material items and beauty. She walks around balancing a purse on her head for reasons I can't even begin to understand. Her materialistic personality becomes painfully obvious when she cuts out pictures of jewelry items from a magazine and puts them on herself. The radio starts becoming staticky, which is never a good sign. A black spirit stands behind a nurse cutout and quickly touches the back of her ear. She doesn't seem to notice how screwed she is and continues right back to arts and crafts beauty. She takes a look at her handiwork in the window's reflection and notices more than just a lipstick streak on her face. The spirit eerily crawls out of her bag and definitely went to the Kayako Saeki Ghost College and got a degree in scaring the shit out of me. She arms herself with a pair of scissors, but the spirit disappears when she turns around. She runs into the hallway terrified and runs past Nook, who's dealing with problems of her own. Her hand gets stuck on a handrail and the entire thing comes off when she tries freeing herself. Dawan appears at the end of the hallway and slowly makes her way toward her. <laughs> She wraps her ghostly hand around her neck before the film goes back in time 15 minutes. This was a great scare scene and a really good introduction to the film's vengeful spirit, Dawan. The nurses don't seem like outstanding individuals and all had a hand in her murder, so we are watching them receive their just desserts. While there are a lot of cliched and overly dramatic moments, the part where Dawan crawls out of the bag is horrifying. As we'll come to see, she is using what the nurses obsess over against them, and in this instance, it's the purse. I also like the part where Dawan appears in her human form, but instantly changes into her ghostly form as the light goes out. As cute as they may be, the twins are super annoying. <laughs> annoying enough to make Yim retreat into her room and exercise in peace. Joe walks past with a handful of food and takes the words straight out of my mouth. Oh, so sexy! 
While stretching her legs, her foot gets grabbed in midair by an unseen force. Yim's obsession over health is as obvious as her love for showering with clothes on. While washing her hair with an unreasonable amount of products, she can't manage to find the last bottle to waste. Thankfully, the spirit helps her out with that. Nothing washes hair better than hair. After the shower, she projects her ideal body size onto herself and almost tears into her skin with a pencil. Seeing how gruesome this film gets later on, I thought for sure this would play a part in how the spirit takes her revenge on her as that could have gotten pretty gnarly. She goes right back to exercising as I consume my second ice cream of the day at 10am while working on this video. True story. Dawan starts caressing her hair and suddenly appears right in front of her. She starts wrapping Yim around with her long black hair until she is fully covered in it, almost like a cocoon. The clock strikes 11.50pm as we realize that Dawan is exacting her revenge on her fellow nurses right before midnight. We are all seeing the nurses being attacked in different scenes, but the events are all happening at the same time. Yim's attack was pretty decently scary and I put it right on par with S scene. The utilization of long black hair as a weapon by Taiwan definitely confirms the Juon influence on this film. It is now Joe's turn to be terrorized by the spirit and to make my viewing experience of this film much more enjoyable. Joe's obsession is with eating food and like the rest of the nurses, keeping up with her beauty. She eats a ton of food and purposely makes herself throw up to maintain her figure. She washes her face off in the bathroom and doesn't notice the extra hand that isn't supposed to be there. She brushes her teeth about as viciously as I do and decides to indulge on a donut while she's at it. She goes right back to brushing her teeth as Dawan can be seen directly behind her. She disappears and quickly reappears right in front of her. <laughs> As if Joe wasn't brushing aggressively enough, Dawan decides to make sure that she gets right behind those molars. Joe takes off running but finds herself going into the same hallway over and over again. She runs right into a cart and a scalpel gets painfully stuck in her leg. Her hand suddenly turns into Dawan's black ghostly hand and grabs a hold of her. Dr. Tar has a flashback of a man named Duwang Wheat lighting a cigarette for him. It's brief but very important to the story. There is a pretty funny scene involving an elderly couple at the awards banquet but it's not important to the story, so let's move on. Dr. Tar tries contacting his buyer but isn't getting a response. We see another flashback involving Du Wang Wei where he explains the tattoo on his back. His tattoo symbolizes eternity and that everything has a cycle, again, something that will come into play later on. Back at the hospital, Nook and the twins are the only ones left in the break room. Nook goes into the bathroom to take a pregnancy test that has positive results. She has a daydream about getting married to Dr. Tar as the baby is presumably his. She steps outside and sees the twins' arms have turned black and are stuck to the table. She then sees that one spirit sitting on the couch, deviously smiling. Nook runs off and tries calling Dr. Tar. The events have now come full circle as we see Air e running across the hall, confirming that all the events are all happening at once. As the clock strikes 11.50, Nook finds herself in a room full of dead bodies. She hears a woman crying and also giggling at the same time. The lights shine down on a body underneath a white sheet and we see a flashback of Dawan before she was killed. Dawan, engaged to Dr. Tar at the time, was playfully hiding from him inside the room full of bodies. Dr. Tar shows up with Nook and the to make love right in front of the hidden Taiwan. When a body is in your way of pleasure, just knock it down. Dawan confronts her sister for making love to her fiancé and Nook says she's pregnant with the doctor's child. The other nurses restrain Dawan as the doctor walks in and tends to Nook. Dawan says that she's going to tell everyone about the illegal body operation, which is the moment that led to her death. Back in the present, Nook hears someone crying from underneath the white sheet. It is revealed to be Dawan in the past crying over the betrayal. Nook receives a call from Dr. Tar and Dawan disappears. She tries telling him what's going on, but Dawan manipulates the call making him think that everything's okay. The shot of Taiwan sitting over Nook with the black lips is haunting. You can still see the frightened expression in her eyes while she has no control over her mouth. It's really well done. She regains control of her arm and tries swinging something at Taiwan, but the spirit disappears. The two twins try running away but run right into Taiwan, who actually looks pretty intimidating. Owen runs into the elevator and her twin disappears. They call one another but aren't aware that they are actually both inside of the elevator. Am goes to look at the security feed and sees Owen still inside 
inside the elevator. That one suddenly appears behind her and knocks her out. Am takes a look at all the cameras and sees all her fellow nurses being tormented by that one at the same time. E is still being choked out by her own hand. Now choke yourself! A plastic bag appears over her face as we see Dawan creepily sneak up behind her. Yim is still being hung by black hair in her room. She tries freeing herself using her tongue and an amused Dawan decides to drop her. Still not freed, she dips her head into a fish tank and drowns her to death. Yim's death is the least scary and most cliche of all of them, not to mention that she went out pretty easy compared to her fellow nurses. Joe is tossed around in a trash can until Dawan takes control of her hand and feeds her trash. She is tormented some more and loses control of both her arms. Dawan forces a ton of water down her throat before she is knocked over into another room by a magic purse. The room she ends up in is full of jars filled with fetuses and body parts. Dawan appears right in front of her and Joe realizes that she's in a really tight pickle. She tries leaving the room but finds that she is now trapped inside by a checkered wall. Dawan gives us a quick jump scare before force feeding Joe a bunch of razors. After flailing around on the floor for a bit, Joe looks down at her hands and finds that her entire lower jaw has been shredded off. Her tongue falls to the ground and her cat decides to indulge in a succulent Thai meal. That one seems extremely pleased with her work but decides to go one step further for the fatality. She throws one of the fetuses from the jars into what's left of Joe's mouth and kills her. Joe's death scene is absolutely brutal. It's gruesome, bloody, and awesome. It's not really scary so much as it is gross. Although the torment she suffers at the hands of that one who is enjoying the entire thing is pretty terrifying to think about. No doubt that this was influenced by the scene in Ju on the Curse where Kana loses her jaw. Am is watching everything unfold through the security feed and tries calling her sister again. On wakes up in the elevator with her cell phone stuck inside of her face. Dawan appears right behind her and smashes her face into the elevator, breaking the phone in the process. Orn spits the broken pieces out of her mouth in a pretty brutal moment. She tries limping away as Dawan slowly stalks her. She finds herself stuck inside of a cabinet which will end up being her her tomb. Am looks at the life feed and realizes that her twin sister is now right behind her. Nook comes across E looking absolutely goofy with her head stuck in a purse. Just when I thought it couldn't, the film decides to turn the brutality level all the way up. That one takes control of Am's arm and has her inject a needle inside of her sister's finger. She then forces her to grab a hold of a saw and in that moment, I knew this was going to be a heck of a video to edit. With both sisters now holding the saw, that one forces them to mutilate On who who seems to have completely lost it. Just the thought of everything that's happening is horrifying. Dawan is showing no mercy and exacting her revenge in the most brutal way possible. I can't imagine the thought of sawing through my own body parts and being powerless to stop it. Back in the hallway, Nook tries freeing E from the purse. The bag is stitched onto her neck and Nook cuts the stitches off with scissors. E tries telling her not to but she quickly pulls the stitches out. What she didn't know was that these stitches were actually keeping the bag and her head attached to her neck. Blood starts pouring down her neck as we are treated to one of the most original decapitation scenes I have ever seen. Nook kicks her way through the set of double doors and sees other nurses walking downstairs. This is another one of Dawan's tricks as dozens of zombie-like nurses appear and surround her. Nook's got that fighting spirit in her though. John Wick killing people using only a pen seal is pretty impressive, but Nook has possibly one up John as her weapon of choice is a pregnancy test. Back in the chop body shop, Am has been forced to cut all of her sister's limbs. On is barely still alive and Am starts begging Dawan to stop. She apologizes for what they did and says that they didn't mean to hurt her. She places a metal gag in her mouth to make her stop talking and we see a flashback of the moments before Dawan's death. We see that Am was reluctant to help and even asked Nook to make the other nurses stop. On, however, pushed her sister away and willingly helped commit the murder. On passes away from her injuries and realizing that Am tried to stop the other nurses, Dawan releases her and lets her go. This is her only moment of mercy. Overcome with grief and guilt at the death of her twin sister, Am grabs the metal saw and moves on with her sister. The twin sister's torture and deaths are in my opinion the most gruesome of the entire film. While not scary in the traditional sense, the brutality of everything going on is very intense. It was very interesting to see that even in her rage-filled revenge, 
That one spirit still shows a small bit of humanity and understanding. I didn't expect her to let anyone go and seeing her do so was surprising. Dr. Tar has another flashback involving Tu Wang Wheat, this time revealing that the two were lovers. Tu Wang Wheat wanted the two to get married, but Dr. Tar said he couldn't marry a man. Three minutes till midnight, Nook successfully dispatched all the nurses in the stairwell. She manages to walk out of the hospital but is quickly surrounded by numerous clones of Da Wan's spirit in another scene seemingly inspired by Juan. After having taken out dozens of enemies in the stairwell, Nook's stamina is running low and it is time to face the final boss. And this one's personal. Da Wan grabs her by the hair and the fight is on. While Nook is an absolutely terrible person for having stolen her sister's man and then killing her, I admire her fighting spirit. She is one of the few people I have seen in an Asian horror film who actually put up a decent fight against a vengeful spirit. Of course, it's not what I would call a fair fight as Dawan has the obvious supernatural advantage. Knowing that Nook is pregnant, she hits her in the stomach several times. Nook begs for mercy from her sister for the sake of her child. At the same time, the people at the awards banquet come together and sing a song about compassion as confetti falls on top of them. Realizing that Dawan isn't buying it, she grabs a stake out of the ground and runs over to stab her. Dawan is always one step ahead. She takes control of her arms and turns the stake onto her stomach. Dr. Tar arrives at the hospital right before the clock strikes midnight. Dawan tries forcing the stake into Nook's stomach, but she stops it with her leg. Dawan still manages to get a couple stabs in before the clock finally strikes 12. The seventh day has now passed and Dawan's spirit becomes powerless. Nook runs over and stabs her sister in the heart for a literal fun surprise. At the award banquet, the confetti has turned into blood that is showering down on everyone. I don't quite understand the meaning of this scene. It possibly means that Dawan has lost all her compassion and mercy and now only wants blood. The sisters grab each other's throat until Dawan pins Nook to the ground. Dr. Tar drags Dawan's body back into the hospital and calls Nook's cell phone. The massive four off the hospital rolls onto the ground and stops right before crushing Nook in a very important place. In another flashback, we see the nurses holding and beating on Dawan before her death. We see just how despicable Dr. Tar is as he had a relationship with every single nurse there. He walks into the hospital carrying Dawan's dead body over his shoulders and sees her spirit waiting for him wearing a wedding dress. She slowly walks towards him as the noise of her heels on the ground echoes through the hallway. Blood starts raining down, showing the film's plot twist in a very nice reveal. Du Wong Wee was so in love with Tar that he became a woman so that the two could get married. A shot of her back reveals the same eternity tattoo, showing that Da Wan was actually Du Wong Wee as Dr. Tar looks at her in shock and horror. Da Wan grabs a hold of him and asks him to marry her. I love this reveal. I found the twist to be original and I didn't see it coming. I liked how they showed bits and pieces of the relationship between Dr. Tar and Du Wong Wee, but didn't reveal the significance until the very end. It's a twist that catches you off guard as much as it shocks you. I also love the delivery of the twist being shown in the blood as Dawan slowly walks towards a shocked Dr. Tar. Really, really good stuff here. No bullshit Nook arrives and douses Dawan's body in gasoline. The two sisters stare at each other intensely before Nook lights the body on fire. The two never break eye contact, even as Dawan's spirit falls to the ground and dies. In the final flashback of the film, Dr. Tar tells Nook that they should get married right after she kills her sister. Nook was the one to deliver the final blow to Dawan both in life and in death. Before her death, Dawan touches her sister's face with her bloody hand and also points to her stomach. Back in the present, Dawan's spirit sinks into the pool of blood and disappears. Dr. Tar says let's get the heck out of here and the two run off. In the stairwell, Nook falls down and cries out in agony clutching onto her stomach. She begins bleeding profusely as Dawan's spirit is reborn and crawls out of her body. In the moment before her death, Dawan cursed her sister's stomach which allowed her to be reborn in this moment. Also placing more context into Du Wangwit's eternity tattoo in that everything is a cycle. It is an absolutely horrifying and shocking scene that again caught me completely off guard. Dr. Tar looks on in absolute shock and disgust at what he's witnessing. In the film's final scene, Dawan turns back into Duong Wheat and says marry me to Dr. Tar as the movie ends. Dang. 
The film's end credits shows all the nurses having fun on a beach to an upbeat song, finally allowing the audience to breathe, the absolute polar opposite of the entirety of this brutal and shocking film. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was... Sick Nurses. My friends, I came into this film blind with zero expectations. Sick Nurses caught me totally by surprise and actually blew me away. The first half hour of the film sort of had me thinking that it was going to be a generic Asian horror film with a vengeful spirit. I did not expect the drastic and brutal turn that the film takes about halfway through. It turned into a relentlessly bloody and gruesome film that had an absolutely amazing twist. Though the Juon influence and homage was present throughout, I never felt that the film was trying to be a ripoff. I actually felt that the film had a ton of originality and very self-aware. While I wouldn't call it extremely scary, it was definitely brutal, shocking, and kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time, earning Sick Nurses a decent scare score of 56%. The scariest scene in the film is by far the final scene. Just when I thought the film couldn't be any more shocking or gruesome, we get the bloody rebirth scene to shock us one final time until the film's very last second of runtime. Great stuff. But, as always, I hope you all enjoy the video. Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.